Breaking news tonight. Israel says all of its ground forces have now left Gaza after several weeks of intense fighting. A 72-hour ceasefire went into effect this morning, and at this hour, it does seem to be holding. One of the biggest flashpoints of this war has been Israel's decision to retaliate against missile attacks from Hamas near schools run by the group, the UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinians in the Near East. Over the course of this current conflict, seven UNRWA schools have fallen victim to the violence, but they're also the same kinds of schools where troves of Hamas rockets have been found on three separate occasions. The latest attack near one of those schools was this past Sunday in a strike that reportedly killed 10 people. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon called it a, quote, moral outrage and a criminal act. And as we reported on The Kelly File last night, State Department spokeswoman Jen Psaki said the U.S. is appalled by the, quote, disgraceful shelling. Our next guest says the problems at these schools are about more than Hamas hiding rockets. She's pointing to a video that her group uncovered last year. She says it shows Palestinian children apparently being indoctrinated to wage jihad against Israel. Watch for yourself. Summer camp teaches us that we have to liberate Palestine and we have to be determined in order to return. A long time ago, before we were born, our parents were on the beach. They sailed ships. They would travel. They had cars, places, and villas. Do we still have the sea? Where is the sea? Do you want to go to the sea? Yes. While our families were having fun on the beach, we were having a barbecue and a wolf appear. Who is the wolf? The Jews. Isn't it true that the Jews are the wolf? What did the Jews do to us? They expelled and deported us. They killed us and shot our families. They expelled us from our villages. They arrested our fathers and grandfathers. Correct? And where did they expel us to? To the refugee camp. Who expelled us? The Jews. All right, we are speaking to both sides of this very heated debate tonight. Chris Gunnis is the spokesperson and director of advocacy and strategic communications for UNRWA. But first, we're going to talk to Brooke Goldstein, human rights attorney and director of the Lawfare Project. All right, Brooke, tell us about this video where it came from, what you think it says about what these kids are being told. So this video was co-produced by the Center for Near East Policy Research and the Lawfare Project in response to repeated denials by UNRWA and by people like Chris Gunnis, who you're going to hear from after me, that the curriculum is totally innocuous, that there's nothing that espouses violence in the curriculum that U.S. taxpayer dollars are funding in UNRWA schools. And the truth is just the opposite. So what we did is we sent Palestinian cameraman to UNRWA schools so that the audience can see for themselves what's happening. And what we also did is we produced a document that's been shared with members of Congress called Exposing UNRWA, which is available on our website. Basically translates line for line the curriculum that UNRWA is using. An eighth grade textbook says, hearing weapons clash is pleasant to my ear and the flow of blood gladdens my soul as well as bodies thrown upon the ground. In the Balata refugee camp, they teach the song, when we die as martyrs, we go up to heaven. Don't say we are children because life excuse me, has made us older. And what we've also documented is the collaboration, the direct collaboration between the United Nations Relief Works Agency and Hamas, a designated terrorist group in the United States by the EU in Canada, and how UNRWA is literally hiring Hamas rocket engineers to serve as teachers to recruit innocent Palestinian children okay. so they can operate as child okay. soldiers and suicide bombers and act as human shields. Let me jump in here. A couple of things. Uh, the U.S. apparently gave more than $130 million to this group last year. You say you've, you've uh, flagged this for congressional lawmakers. You've put out the report. Why, if they are convinced, if there's evidence there, have they not stepped in to say this has got to stop? Well, first of all, I want to mention that Canada has divested completely from UNRWA's general operation fund and is not allowing any type of money to go to UNRWA unless it's pre-approved for specific projects, specifically because of reports like these. And what we're seeing now is members of Congress are calling out the State Department for using American taxpayer dollars illegally. It is a violation of U.S. law, specifically the 
Foreign Assistance Act for any U.S. taxpayer dollars to be used to furnish military training to terrorist groups or to indoctrinate children towards violence. And what we see, even reported by the New York Times back in 2000, is UNRWA schools allowing Hamas to come in and use the schools as military training camps for innocent Palestinian children where they're taught how to kill and lynch Israeli soldiers, how to make Molotov cocktails. This is an egregious crime against Palestinian children, the very people that UNRWA is mandated to protect. Okay, Brooke, obviously uh, a lot of heated accusations there, so we're going to talk to the other side. We thank you for flagging this for us. Here now to respond, Chris Gunnis, the spokesperson for the United Nations Relief and Works Agency. All right, Chris, uh, you know, Brooke says it is, it is documented. The State Department's aware. Canada's divested. Congressional lawmakers are aware. This is your chance to respond. Well, can I say first of all that the Center for Near East Studies, or the center run by a man called David Bedeen, is so discredited that when he gave a briefing in Congress, which I attended, no one attended. The man has no credibility. He has made accusations against UNRWA for years which are completely unfounded. Uh, let me just take out this from my ear because the well, sound is coming back. Um, can I say that what David Bedeen does is to go into schools which are non-UNRWA schools, film and then present them as if they were uh, UNRWA facilities. That's one of his favorite tricks. But can I make a couple more points? The same curriculum which Ms. Goldstein is telling us is anti-Semitic, is anti-Israel, is the very same curriculum that is taught by Israel in the schools it administers right. in East Jerusalem. He's not going to be able to Are hear me, so we're going to have to, to we're gonna, we're gonna have to stop Goldstein him for just a second. That Israel um, is teaching in the schools it administers this right. curriculum, which you say is anti-Semitic and anti-Israel. And one last point, the, the period which saw the largest growth uh, increase in UNRWA's funding uh, was the Bush administration. So can I ask you to explain why, if we're so anti-Israel, anti-Semitic, why is it that it was the Bush administration, it was under the Bush administration, that we saw the largest increase in funding to UNRWA? Okay, Chris, I'm glad you have your earpiece back in. Uh, you talked about that this is the same curriculum that they have in Israel. We've, of course, done some fact-checking there. And what we've learned in is East that... Jerusalem. In East what, Jerusalem. What we found out is that each country, East host country, uh, essentially puts together its own curriculum. The UN helps to facilitate that, may provide some funding and some facilities. So I'm pretty sure that Israel is not teaching the exact same thing that they're teaching uh, to Palestinian children. We've seen evidence they are not the same thing. So we have to start I'm there. Sorry. And if you want I'm to, sorry. and if you want to I'm discredit sorry. the the I'm one gentleman sorry. you mentioned up I'm front, we have to talk you. about the New York Times. Do you also disagree with the New York Times the because this is some of their reporting? Do you also take uh, Do you also take issue with the New York Times reporting on this as well? I've not read the article you're talking about, but any suggestion that Israel does not teach those self-same books in the schools in East Jerusalem is wrong. And I ask you, and I ask Ms. Goldstein, why is it that these books, which are apparently so anti-Semitic, so anti-Israel, that curriculum is the self-same curriculum that's taught by the Israeli Education Ministry in East Jerusalem. Please answer me that question. And by the way, when I asked Fox Just News for the record, to come on and not. debate with her, they wouldn't let me. Well, we like, to give, people, we like to give people, people equal time. Sometimes when it's this heated, people are going to talk over each other. So we want to make sure that each, people have, uh, each person has okay. their right to say their piece. But answer so, me that question, please. About the, about the textbooks? Answer me that question. Okay, because yeah, our, what, what Israel, we're told why is, is that Israel, Israel does not have the same curriculum. curriculum, that every country has its own curriculum, that it is funded by the UN, the and that each country makes its own decision about the curriculum. I hear what you say. I hear what you say. In East Jerusalem, the curriculum that we teach is exactly the same curriculum taught by Israel. But answer me my other question. If we're such an anti-Semitic, pro-terror, pro right return organization. Why is it that the period which saw the largest increase of our funding was the Bush administration? First of all, Come on, you're Fox News. First you're in first touch of all, with the Bush administration. Uh, Tell us why. First of all, let's be respectful. On. And I'm on this, on this show, it is the host, usually Megyn Kelly, me sitting in tonight, who asked the question, not the guest. 
So let me just say this. No, it's the a funding debate. has it's increased over the years. Come on. The let's funding has increased over let's, the years. Let's be, and when let's... people bring this attention and, and documentation to the State Department and to lawmakers, there are then questions. If they didn't know about this before, maybe they weren't objecting. <laughs> now they are objecting. All right, Chris, Look, you've had your time, you so we're really going to wrap it up right there. You really don't sound at all convincing. You really don't Chris, sound at all convincing. Chris, it's not my job to be convincing. You're the guest. You're putting the accusations. You're the guest. I'm answering them. You've come back with nothing. Okay, well, putting facts on the table, and I have a lot of them here, is not nothing. We give our viewers the I'm facts. Sorry. They decide. Chris, People thank you for your time. This will not be convinced. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Not my job to convince. All right, Brooke, you heard what he had to say. He says that this is the exact same curriculum but on both sides. Uh, is he right about that? Because our research shows no. It's so he is convinced. You know, it's funny that he doesn't deny the content. He only says it was used in his schools. He admitted it is used in UNRWA schools in Jerusalem. Correct. This is the curriculum that UNRWA uses both in Jerusalem and in Gaza and in the West Bank. And talk about discrediting someone. Chris Gunnis has lied to the media uh, repeatedly. Number one, he promoted Dr. Mads Gilbert as the contact for UNRWA in, in Gaza. Mads Gilbert is someone who has gone on record defending the moral right of Al-Qaeda to attack Americans on 9-11. Also, he does not deny that Awad Al-Qaeda was the deputy headmaster at UNRWA's Rafa Prep School in Gaza. Right. He was the rocket engineer. UNRWA is placing innocent Palestinian children in harm's way. They're doing it in with U.S. taxpayer dollars. All right, Brooke, obviously very strong opinions on both sides. We're glad to have you both. Let you air it out. Let you talk about it. Let our viewers uh, look at it and decide. Thank you both for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.